here I am starting off today with um, walking into my craft room, but that's not what I want to show you. Uh, what's the date today? Like April 16th, 17th? Look at what we have here in Ontario, Canada. This is my backyard. It is beautiful, but you know, it happens sometimes in Canada. <laughs> and um, well, break out the uh, hat, scarves, snow boots. It's not really staying on the ground. Well, depends where, on the pavement, not. On the grass, it is. It is gorgeous though. So that's what we have today. Welcome to my winter wonderland. And welcome to another video. Let's see what I've got for you today. Hi there, welcome to my channel. I'm Rhonda and it's good to see you today. Well, I can't really see you, can I? <laughs> Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rhonda and I hope you're having a great day and um, I hope you enjoyed getting a look at my winter wonderland. <laughs> it is beautiful, I have to say, and honestly, I expect it. You know, it seems that everybody here in Canada, born here, raised here, April comes, they think, woohoo, get out the short sleeves put on some shorts. I think they're crazy because it's still too cold for shorts, but you know, people get excited. And then all of a sudden it snows between the beginning and the middle of April. And they're like thinking it's like, ah, it's a tragedy. Hello, it happens every single year. <laughs> I don't understand how people don't get this. So anyways, I just say, enjoy it. It's pretty. It's going to be melted before you know it. And I mean, you saw it's gorgeous. So Anyway, so I don't have a lot to show you today because I was working on this blanket here and Afghan, whatever you want to call it, and I'm finally done. I tried to add on a little bit more, but I just quit while I was ahead. And it's funny because at each stage I thought, should I leave it alone? And every extra round at the border was a risk. Um, so you'll see that I did add some and I actually really like it. I do. So I'm going to get it a little bit closer to you. It's so cozy. So if you were watching my other videos, you would have seen that I had some weird things happening with this yarn. This yarn is loops and threads braid big and I was getting these weird clumps. And stupid me, okay? Like, it's like one of those head slapping moments where what was I thinking? Because I had one skein of yarn that arrived in that weird delivery I had from Michael's and it was wound around part of it. Part of it was wound around. It also had some curling ribbon attached as though it belonged to somebody prior. And yeah, they gave it back because it had a ton of these right through. And I thought, I'm just going to go with it because I started using it. Dumb stupid, foolish, whatever you want to call me, it was stupid, okay? Like, I admit it. I should have just put it aside and gone with the rest. I had 10 skeins of this stuff, and it's big yarn. This is big. I had plenty. I've got four left. I did not have to use that defective skein. I could have given it back. Anyways, I wasn't thinking straight. I used it. I put it through the project. I hope it doesn't fall apart <laughs> the first time I wash it. But I have to say the rest of them are seen. I think I might have had one other one where these this problem was in it. Um, but not as much as the one that was so bad. It was really bad. Um, and you can't really see it. I mean, if I'm looking for it, I could see spots where it is. I tried to fix some of them. But anyways, I really love the way it turned out. I don't know if you can see how, just how soft and squishy this afghan is. These stitches are just gorgeous. And the border, I put in some roving. I put in, I gotta show you. I added some of this Loops and Threads Barcelona roving in the colorway purple not too imaginative but 
very, very soft. And I thought, I'm not really sure what I'm going to use it for. And actually, I can make a coordinating decorative pillow because I have enough left of both of these yarns. But look at the way that looks. When I did the rounds, it actually divided the color. Uh, there's better places to see this. Here, you can see it here. It just made that beautiful change in color from that white tone to the, the, the lilac tone. And then I put in these bobble stitches. I don't know how well you can see that. Anyways, you might laugh at me. This is really funny. I'm not really good at embroidery, but I thought... I had mentioned that this reminds me of a garden in spring. And, you know, it looks like... It looks like a bud of a flower about to open. So <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed to show you, but I incorporated it in the corner of my blanket. I did my best to embroider this little flower. I put some green in it for the leaves and I put a little bow in. I don't know if you can see that. It's Oh, I shouldn't be showing you this. It Honestly, from far away, it doesn't look so bad. It looks pretty good, actually. You know, it's... But it's such a small little corner in this big afghan. Let me show you how big this is. I'm a mess. I was shopping. I was out in that snow. Anyways, you know, in a way it's good it's snowing because my house will be cooler and I can enjoy this before the hot weather comes. It is stunning. I think anyways. Okay, let's see. It goes this way. I'm going to stand back so you can see the size of it. So very, very cozy. And I like the colors in it. So subtle, a very subtle striping effect, but not through the whole thing, kind of dispersed and beautiful. I, I like it. So that's done. And it took me a while. Um, I was going to add to these rounds, but I thought that was enough because my corners were getting pointy and I just, I didn't want to take any more risks. <laughs> that was it. So that's the blanket. I'm just going to put that back. So I'm quite pleased the way it turned out. But that being said, because it took so much time, I don't really have more to tell you about. But there's one thing I need to address, which is really the most important thing and should have come first. I have reached a milestone. Thanks to all of you wonderful people. I just can't thank you enough. I have reached 500 subscribers and I've only been at this since January 9th. So we're not even talking four months and I'm at 500. Because of this wonderful community, I have reached that goal and I'm thrilled. I'm waiting for my community tab to come in. Apparently it takes a week because right away when I hit 500, it's like, where's my community tab? I'm not sure what I'll put in it, but I'm sure I'll find something. It's just an extra thing that I have to think about, which is fabulous. An extra element to my, to my YouTube channel. I just want to thank you. You have all been so wonderful. And I know I've said it before, but honestly, it doesn't matter how many times I say it. It will never be enough for how you've all been through my DIY hero pursuit. Um, that really opened me up to meeting a lot of you, to having you come to my channel to see what's up, to introduce yourself, comment, show me lots of appreciation and support and encouragement, all your wonderful compliments. I mean, I don't have enough words to say it all. I can only say thank you to those of you who are here, to those other content creators who shared the word about my contest or shared the word about me personally, sent people to my channel. Mwah. <laughs> I just, I'm like overwhelmed with gratitude. So yes, I promised a giveaway and I'm going to have a giveaway. I don't have it on this video because I'm waiting for something to be shipped to me. And 
then I will have my giveaway. I've been getting ready for it. So stay tuned. Make sure if you're not subscribed, subscribe, but don't just subscribe. Hit that little notification bell next to the subscribe button and make sure you get all of my videos. So get notifications for all videos because I don't want you to miss it. The winner of my 100 subscriber giveaway did not get the notification that she won. And that's unfortunate because I think she would have been happy to know she won. It's always nice to win. Uh, great for the final winner because then she had a chance. So I'm really happy for, for my winner. And um, now we're going to go to another one, but I don't want anybody to miss it. Even when I did the redraw, not everybody came back. Had they hit that notification bell and asked for all notifications, they would have known that they had a second chance. So good for you who have the notification bell hit, who managed to come back, who managed to enter, and we've got another one coming. So stay tuned and also like this video because it really helps me like all my videos that you like. If you don't like them, don't hit the like, but if you like them, hit the like and share it. If you think somebody else will appreciate my video, then please share because the more people that know, the more people that come to my channel, the closer I get to a thousand. And um, that helps me a lot because I want to keep giving giveaways that are wonderful for you and as well I've miss and as well I've mentioned before I have some links down below in my description box if you're planning on doing some shopping for yarn or supplies uh, hit the links down below because it's a quick access to those little stores that I recommend to you and I am an affiliate for these companies and so if you purchase something I get a little commission and I put that towards this channel. I put it towards giving back to you. I put it towards giveaways. So I haven't gotten there yet. I haven't received anything yet. I'm pretty new at this. Remember, I've only been at this since January 9th. So I'm working my way up and I hope to keep providing content to you and giveaways and stuff that keeps you interested, happy and coming back. So what do I have today? I have a couple of things to show you just little things. I hope you like it. I've got one really interesting vintage magazine with crochet patterns and I think it's fun to look at what was popular back then and if things changed or things the same. So I'm going to show you the magazine. Plus I wanted to give you a closer look at Loops and Threads Fleck yarn because I find it so pretty. I'm getting ready to use it again. But the one complaint is that it splits. But I also know that there are other yarns that split. One is the um, Caron Simply Soft. And the other one is Trubu yarn and other yarns like that. Kobu yarn, these bamboo yarns, they just split. Well, this one splits as well. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to try it. I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I'm going to work with it. For you to see it and I will let you know what I think. Is it worth the effort because it's really pretty yarn and I have to say I worked up just a small swatch and it reminds me of the softness and silkiness of Trubu. So in spite of the complaints that this Loops and Threads Flex yarn is too splitty and people have been annoyed by it I was brave because I got it on sale and I thought it's so pretty that I got it in three colors. I got this shade of pink. If you watch some of my other videos, you'll know that this yarn was sent to me two. I ordered two and I got two different dye lots and um, they were two different shades of pink. So they sent me two more and those two more they sent were the same color as one of the pinks. And this was the odd one out. So I thought I would try a sample with this one. But this yarn, um, there's quite a bit in it. So I think I could use it for something substantial. I like a, a baby's dress or, or um, a baby's sweater. And it's light. It really kind of has that feel 
like Chubu. Even though it's not made of bamboo, it feels light. So I'll tell you about this yarn, and I've, I've talked about it before, but I haven't looked this closely at it. So again, it's Loops and Threads Flex Yarn. And this is the one I've been working with. That's why you're seeing these loose ends. And it is considered a medium weight four. I do find it a little bit like a three. So it's a very light four. As you can see, the flex. It's beautiful color. It's got blue and white flex in the pink. Really pretty. Very silky feeling. Very soft. The recommended hook size is five millimeter. It is hand wash, do not bleach, dry flat, do not iron, which makes it not that practical for a baby. However, I find that any anything we make with yarn, a lot of the time it's nice to hand wash just because we know we're lengthening the life of our garment if we're wearing it or whatever project it is. And if it's something that's special, then it's okay because the baby's not wearing it all the time. So it's okay to hand wash sometimes. It doesn't take that long. And honestly, dry the dryer ruins things anyways over time. So it's preferable to lay it flat to dry anyways and being a small garment it's not hard to hand wash so honestly I don't mind it but it's personal preference I wouldn't want everything hand washable because then what's the point of having a washing machine but for certain garments I have no problem with hand washing or I would probably venture to be honest with you I would venture to buy a mesh bag put it into the mesh bag and put it on the hand wash cycle in the washing machine and see how that goes. But I wouldn't put it in the dryer. And a lot of things I don't put in the dryer anyways because I do want to preserve the life of them. So that's my opinion. The color of this is light pink and it is 355 yards, 6.53 ounces or 324 meters. 185 grams. 355 yards, it's a good amount of yarn to make a few small things for baby, whether it's um, a little cardigan, a little top, maybe even a dress. It wouldn't take that much. There is a pattern for a blanket on the label and it looks like knit. I can find out. I'll take the label off. Let me take a closer look. So the pattern on the label is a knit pattern. If you knit, you can make this really pretty blanket. And it seems that this is the pattern on each of these labels. But that being said, there's no shortage of patterns out there and lots of free patterns as well. Anyways, I did work up the pink a little bit and I'm going to show you. I'm going to put the camera overhead to show you how I worked with it. But first, I'll show you the colors I got. So I got the pink and I got this beautiful shade of yellow it's called sunshine and look how pretty that is it's got like the pinks and the blues I love it I just love that shade of yellow and I really love this one this one is called sweet cream and I I love cream whether it's whipped cream or cream in my coffee so it's just so yummy and it's got purple flecks and pale yellow flecks. And the nice thing is about this yarn is the colors of the flecks go through the yarn itself. I don't know if you can see that. But like I said, it's splitty. And here you can definitely see how this yarn does split. Look at that. So I tried it, honestly, so far. I haven't done a big swatch. But I was okay with it. I really was. I didn't mind. So this is what I've done with it so far. Admittedly, it's not a huge swatch, but look how pretty it works up. So I'm going to go overhead. I'm going to show you how it is to work with it. This is just a half double crochet, so a simple stitch. I really like the stitch definition. I find it to be really pretty. And just seeing how the blue 
blends in with the pink. I don't know how well you can see it now, but I'll go overhead. Let's take a look. Okay, one thing I keep forgetting to mention when I use yarn is how it comes off the skein. Now with this one, I was not successful at getting that center pull. When I used the loops and threads braid big, it was actually really a pleasure getting out of the center. And I enjoyed that because I didn't have a problem with tangling of the yarn. It was just really nice to work with that way. So this one, I didn't mind taking the label off because I'm actually working from the outside because I didn't want to pull it all out from the center and risk yarn barf when I haven't really started working with it yet. I just wanted to take it out to show you. So like I said, here I've done the half double. If you look at it closely, you can see that it is definitely splitty yarn. You can see each one of these fibers quite clearly. So it is intimidating that way. So that being said, I am going to show you how it is for me to work with it because even though it looks intimidating, I found that it wasn't as aggravating or difficult to work with as I thought it might be. Okay, so I am going to show you how it worked up for me. I'm going to continue with the half doubles as I've done with the rest of this, the swatch thus far just to show you how it is to work with. You do have to pay a little more attention not to get tangled in those fibers but as you can see it's it's not gliding too badly. I don't mind I don't mind this. I mean, I really like the yarn. I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. It's so drapey. I know you could make a really nice summer garment with this. And I didn't tell you what the materials are in this yarn. What are the contents of this yarn? This yarn is 79% acrylic and 21% polyester and it just feels really soft. It is mostly acrylic but it just almost feels like to be honest with you it doesn't feel much different than the bamboo to me. So here is the kobu right here and this is a combination of cotton and bamboo and you can see it's got the same splitty fibers and the way it works up. I mean, this does definitely feel like a more organic material than this, but that being said, this feels really nice. I mean, in comparing them, they both look similar in the way they work up and the way they feel in the drape of them. So I would have no issues working with this. Now, of course, the Kobu, I believe, is washable. So the Kobu is machine washable and dryable. This is a three-way. This is a four-way. Let's take a look and you'll see what I mean. They're very similar. I don't see much of a difference there. You can see that they look pretty much the same. And even the way they're spun is pretty much the same. They have the same type of feel. If you are opposed to hand washing, this is going to be a problem for you. But what I do like about it are the flex. I think it just adds something to it. And so again, I don't find it too bad to work with at all. And if I can't go speedy fast, I just know it's going to be a project that takes just a little bit longer. And I just have to take a little more time with it. And I try not to be in a hurry anyway, so I'm okay with that. And I'll just get to the end of the row here. And show you a couple more stitches, just basic stitches. I'm not going to get fancy with it. Okay, now just to see how 
I can do other stitches with it. I'm going to try the single crochet and see how that works up. Not really struggling through the splittiness of this yarn. And the double crochet. So I wouldn't be afraid of the splittiness of the yarn. I would just know it, be prepared for it, and enjoy it because the color is just so pretty. Just the different different variations in the color. It's so soft and lovely. So I would use it. I would take a chance. If you're not sure and you want to try this, then buy a couple of them just to try it out. And if you like it, great. If you don't like it, it was an experience and you can just give it away or just let it sit until maybe you want to brave it out again. But yeah, so that's the Loops and Threads Flex. I like it. So now we're going to take a look at this vintage magazine that I have. This should be interesting. Okay, I think it's fun to look at things from the past. And this is from August 1996. It costs $4.95, probably a little bit cheaper than you would find today. I'm not sure how much the magazines are. I typically don't buy them, but I know it feels good to have a magazine. It's fun to buy a new magazine. This is a leisure arts magazine. I'm not even sure if they still make them. I really should probably look it up, but look at this. 26 projects for $4.95 back then. And even today, I think they're pretty reasonable. I'm not sure how many projects you get in a magazine, but that's, I think that's a good number of projects and it makes it fun to look at. So let's take a look at the front. You can see, imagine this little girl. This little girl is in her 20s now, I would imagine. <laughs> Interesting to know. But look at this afghan. Just the front page shows you there's something really yummy inside. I've never seen an afghan that's so colorful and fun and pretty. So, and here, summer sweater, bath baskets, little things that mean a lot. Make our bright birthday afghan. So this is a bright birthday afghan. Can you see everything here? Okay, so let's take a look inside. And here's our table of contents where we see everything. There's a lot, a lot in it. Can you see it all? Oh, I'm going to lift this up just to make sure you can see everything. And look at this. A doily, a pretty pineapple doily. Baby soft blankets folk with an accent on edgings. Fashion show. Summertime sweater. Bath baskets. Cheery place setting. Sweet sailors. Baby outfit. I don't know if that's coming back. I believe that Crystal from Bag of Day just did a sailor dress. So here's a little baby sailor outfit. And you can see the picture here. This is so adorable. There's a story about Anne Halliday, who is a maker who has published a lot of different books with her patterns. So that should be interesting to read about her life. Another Afghan, ponytail band, corner page keeper. That's interesting. Triangle shawl, that's timeless. Pineapple dream, afghan, peachy baby wrap, iced tea jackets. Star spangled afghan, box turtle. Cool, and then there's all these departments. That's a lot of projects. Then of course, editor's message, heart to heart. I don't know everything. I haven't read the whole magazine, but it looks like some interesting things. Working with fabric. I think the baskets in this magazine are made with fabric. Questions and tips. Look at this doily. If you're into making doilies, that's gorgeous. I've tried making doilies, but it's not something I typically do just because I'm not into decorating with doilies. I'm not sure if they're making a comeback or not, but they're just beautiful. Such a gorgeous vintage look. 
baby soft blankets. Now this is actually a cloth blanket with a crocheted edging. So that's an idea that you can do if it's a summer blanket. If you don't want to crochet something because you think it's too warm, here's a way to embellish a blanket with an edging. And it is a vintage style and I would like to hear from you if you know if this is something that people are doing still, if you would do it yourself. Is this something that you think a new parent would be interested in? So let me know what you think on that one. So here's a summer sweater. It looks like a classic style. I'm so, so on it. I personally would not wear it myself, to be honest, but that's just me. It's a short sweater. Now, I suppose you could make it longer. This is the ribbing edge here, but I would probably make it longer, but I'm not crazy about the style for summer because this neckline with the ribbing, I think that's more of a winter look. Personally, I would prefer a scoop neck or a v-neck. So this to me looks like a, a wintry top trying to look summery, but still it is pretty and actually you could make it with any yarn you want and it could be turned into a winter sweater. So for that, I would say it's pretty and I could see wearing that if it were made longer, but that's because I don't like wearing things that are too short on me. I like it to at least go past my hips. That's a preference. Look at these baskets. These are made with fabric and they look like they'd be really pretty. Wide fabric strips is what they're made with. One inch wide fabric strips. That's an interesting uh, project. If you're trying to make baskets, that would look really pretty. Ooh, cute. Look at this. This would be really nice if you're having a little picnic outside. Look how pretty that is. And again, remember this is from the 90s. I'm not sure if people are still using these things. Definitely I see a lot of coasters being made, placemats, I don't know about, but look how cute that is. I love the one for the teapot. That's really nice. So it's got um, a hot pad, coasters, and a placemat, and a napkin ring as well. Cute, I like that. Okay. Here we go with the sailor outfits. That's so cute. I like this one. That's a really cute hat. I would definitely make that for a baby today. Whether I put the anchor on, I don't know. I could put something else on that. You could put any applique you want on that. And this is really frilly. That's cute. And look at these. So sweet. I'm not sure about the sailor motif. I don't know if it's something that is really big these days for babies but they're really cute and again you could make them without the anchors you could put other appliques on so you could work with these and make them personal to yourself so here is Anne Halliday's story talks all about how she left her her life in New York City for peace and quiet in southern Vermont and she went for the simpler life and she started doing all her crocheting and she was happy. She lived happily ever after. So that would be an interesting story to read about somebody else's life. And look at this. This is all of your patterns here towards the back in this magazine. The pages, I don't know if they started off with the yellow edges but that's a nice vintage look. <laughs> doesn't bother me. It's clean. It doesn't smell old. Now look at this. This is the Timeless Triangle Shawl chart. It's, and we haven't seen the picture for that yet. But that's filet crochet, which I haven't tried yet. This, so the patterns are in the center. And then there's more afterwards. Ponytail band. I heard those are making a comeback, but you know, comeback or not, look how pretty that is. And with the warmer weather coming and you want your hair off your face, that's so feminine. I really like that. And the thing is you can make yourself a top with a matching hair band. If you're into matchy matchy, that's a cute idea. Oh, now look at these. 
corner saver, corner page keeper. I have never seen that idea before, but what a great idea. You just put it over your page and it saves it for you. So whether you see them or not, if people are still reading real books, not just electronic ones, that would be a welcome little gift. I like that. And also something that would be really nice to sell at a craft fair because all these little small things that don't cost much are the type of things people don't mind buying. So it could add up to some profit at your, at your craft fair. Now, look at this shawl. You could make it with or without the fringes, but the filet crochet is so pretty. I've never tried filet crochet. Let me know if you've tried it and if you would do this shawl because... Personally, I think this is timeless and beautiful if you're into shawls. Now, I've said before, I'm not a shawl person, which I'm not. Um, but if I had to go to a wedding and I had a sleeveless dress and I wanted to cover up, this would be something that I could see wearing because it's beautiful. What else is in this magazine? Oh, not one, but two. Afghans. Now is this for children? This looks like me this looks like it's a regular size Afghan. Now this is great if you're gonna do it in a light fat a light yarn. It's full of holes. It's not a solid Afghan. It's gorgeous. It's decorative in terms of usability. If you want to cover yourself and, and be cozy. That's a lot of spaces in that one, but it is gorgeous. And look at this beautiful peach afghan for baby. That's really nice. It's got nice stitch definition, nice pattern, and not a lot of spaces in it, so it's still going to be cozy to wrap baby in. This is another small item that would be great for for craft fairs, a tea cozy, whether it's for a beer mug or for a glass of iced tea or for coffee, you can make them any size, really. Just adjust the size of the circle. Uh, they could be water bottle holders, which is a great idea. You could make them taller for water bottles and put a strap on them. And that makes it really handy because I don't know about you, but I know I should be drinking more water, but when I'm out and I'm walking, I don't feel like holding that bottle, but if I had a little holder for it, what a great idea. So this can be made like this, or you can add on to it. And that's what I like about patterns like this, because you can be flexible. Star Spangled Afghan. Well, that's beautiful. And I am Canadian, but I appreciate an American theme. And this would be a beautiful Independence Day item, Independence Day gift for somebody, or, hey, listen, I'm all about change and honestly you could make this any color you want. It doesn't have to be star spangled red, white and blue colors. It could be any of your favorite colors that you want to use. And it's a gorgeous pattern. Really pretty. Look at this box turtle. Underneath the daisy top shell of our whimsical turtle is the perfect hiding place for sweet treats or little keepsakes made by fitting the crocheted lid and base around the top and bottom of a plastic soda bottle. This box is a playful project for a kitchen, a bathroom, or a child's room. Isn't that amazing? You can see this is the top of the bottle and this is the bottom of the bottle. That's awesome. What a great idea. And what a way to recycle your plastic. I love it. Isn't that cute? And when you think about it, you could make it a turtle or you could leave off the head and the legs and the tail and just do whatever you want. Do whatever yarn colors. You can mix and match the colors. That would have been great for Easter because it kind of looks like a little bit like an egg, an egg shape with a flat bottom. But you could have decorated with Easter egg colors. And I like the flower on the top. That's really cute. Are we at the end yet? Yes. Just shows books you'll love, but of course these are vintage, so I don't know how easily you'll find them. I might have some of them, but I'm not sure. Nothing 
looks like it jumps out at me at this point. And also what's nice is at the back of it, there are some instructions, two pages of instructions. So I like that. So I hope you enjoyed that because I know it's vintage and they may be hard to find. I have some of them. So I don't know if I have it listed in my Etsy shop at this point, but definitely if you're interested in one, let me know because I have a few. I don't have many and I know I'm going to keep one for myself, but let me know. And if you're interested in any other crafts or crochet, take a look at my Etsy shop, Craft Corner Plus. The link is below in the description box because I have a lot of brand new vintage books. I've got a quilting magazine as well and I've got some gorgeous quilting books. Stunning. Makes me wish I quilted, but I don't. I've got books on scrapbooking and cross stitch and plastic canvas and decorative painting and beading, you name it, I've got it. So if there's anything you're interested in, please check out my Etsy site and let me know if there's something that you want that isn't there because I have a lot of books still that have yet to have been posted. Have a look and let me know what you think. If you wanna see more books and magazines, if you wanna see a different craft in some of my books, please let me know because I would love to show you. I have so much to show you with gorgeous pictures, things that I wish I could do, stunning things. I have some books that have a variety of crochet and other types of crafts in them. So if you like trying out new crafts, that's a, also a great idea. So if you have any requests for books you'd like to see, any themes, any crafts, please let me know and I will show you. That's it for today. I hope you Enjoy these little tidbits of information, had fun with it, let me know. So until next time, which should be my 500 subscriber giveaway, have a great day, have a great evening. I love you all and I will see you again soon. Bye for now. <music>